Hi there, I'm Sumit Bansal and in today's video, I'm going to tell you about the by row function in Excel. Now by row is a relatively new function and now that we have dynamic arrays, this function could be quite useful when you're working with the large data set. So with by row function, you can give it an entire data set and it is going to analyze your data set row by row and give you the result for each row. So let me show you how it works. So let me start by explaining the syntax of the by row function. So the by row function takes two arguments. The first one is the array. Now this is going to be your data set that has multiple rows and you feed this as the first argument so that it analyze each row one at a time. And then the second argument is the function. This is the function that will be used to analyze each row. Now, one important thing to note here is that this second argument needs to be a Lambda function. Now, if you do not know what a Lambda is, I've done a separate video on it. I'll also have a link in the description so you can check the video out. But the second argument needs to be a Lambda. So for each row in the this array argument, the Lambda function will be used and it is going to give you the result for each row. So now let me show you a very simple example that will make it very clear how the by row function works. So here I have this data set where I have the sales rep names and their sales for all these given months. Now what I want to do is know what is the maximum value, the sales value for each of these sales rep. So if I have to do this without using the by row function, I can do this using the max function where I would just give this row as the input in this function and it gives me the result and I can copy this down. But with by row function, you can just use one function and you do not have to copy the formula down because by, the, by row is a dynamic array formula and it is going to spill. So now let's use the by row function instead. So here, the first argument is going to be the array. So I'm going to give this entire array. So I do not need to give it one row at a time. I'll give the entire data set and the function itself will take care of uh, processing one row at a time. And now the second argument needs to be a Lambda function as I mentioned, but if it is a very simple function that takes just one argument, then Microsoft team has already given us this drop down where you can choose the function. For example, if I choose the sum function, it is going to analyze each row and give me the sum of each row. If I use the max function here, it is going to give me the maximum value of each row. Now these functions, these this list of functions that is already there, these are the functions that only take one argument and that argument is going to be the row in this data set, every row. So now in this case, if I use max here, then it is going to give me the entire column of results. And here it gives me the maximum value for each row. So as I mentioned, you can choose from this uh, second argument, this drop down list of functions. But if you want to create a more complex Lambda function that uses more than one argument, then the team also gives you this option to create your own Lambda. So in this case, this is a very simple example where I've just used a, a max function, which takes one single argument and gives us the result where the maximum value of each row is returned. Now let's look at a slightly more advanced example. So here again, I have the same data set. And in this case, I do not want to get the maximum value for each sales rep. Instead, I want to get the name of the month in which that maximum sale was done. So in this case, what I need to do is first identify the maximum value for each row, then go back to this column here, this uh, head, uh, column headers and identify the month name. So to do that, what I'm going to do is let's first create the formula. So I'm going to use the max function to get the maximum value for this row. So this gives me the maximum value. Now, if I want to get the month name, I'm going to use the XLOOKUP function. So this is the function where my lookup value is going to be the maximum value. I'm going to look this value in this lookup array. So this is going to give me the position of this lookup value and the return array is going to be these month names. So it is going to find the position of the maximum sales value and then give the value from the column names row. So now when I hit enter and let's make this exact match. And now when I hit enter, it gives me June here and I can drag this down for all these and I'll have to lock these if I want to drag this down. So let's lock this and let's lock this here. So now when I drag this down, it gives me the right result. Now, this is a regular XLOOKUP function and I have to copy the formula down, but I want to use the BIRO function because with BIRO, I don't have to copy it down. So let's remove all this. Let's use the BIRO function here where I'm going to put this entire thing as the array. Now, because XLOOKUP is not here in this list, I would have to create my own Lambda. So let's do that. I would create, uh, create a Lambda. Now in the Lambda function, the first argument is going to be something that represents this row. So let's just call it row. 
and then I'm going to use the formula. So now my formula in this case is going to be this XLOOKUP formula. Let me do this in the formula bar. Let me expand this a little. So here I have the XLOOKUP function. Now, instead of this part here, instead of this reference, I can just use row because lambda function is taking one row at a time. Then it is going to find the maximum value in that row. Then it is going to find the position of that value in the row. And then it is going to give me the result from here. So now if I hit enter, it should give me the result and it does give me the result. It gives me the right result where I have the month that got the highest sales for each uh, rep. So this is how you can create your own Lambda. Now again, this is a very simple Lambda, but you can see that in this Lambda, I'm using a function that is not there by default in the dropdown that we saw earlier. So if you have, if you're using a function that is already there in the dropdown and you just need to feed one row, use that. Otherwise you can create your own Lambdas. Now this is a very useful function when you need to analyze your data row by row and uh, I've used it multiple times, but there are a few limitations of this function that you need to know about. So let me show you those limitations. So here again, I have the same data set and what I want to do is I want to use the by row function in such a way that it gives me the result down the column, but also the result of every row is also an array. So it gives me the result here in the column as well as in the rows. So let me show you what I mean here. So if I use the large function, and I use this as the array, just one single row. And I want to get the top three largest values. What I can do is have within curly brackets, I can have one comma two comma three. And now when I hit enter, it is going to give me these three values because the large function, it takes the entire row. And then it first gives me the value for one, then for two, then for three. Now this is something where I'm getting an array as a result, which is spilling in multiple columns. Now, if I try and do the same thing using the Bido function, let's see what happens. So I'm going to use the Bido function where this is going to be my entire array. And then I'm going to use a Lambda, the Lambda because uh, there is no large function in this list. So let me create that Lambda. And within the Lambda, I'm going to use a row, which is going to represent each row in this data set. And then the formula that would be applied on each row. So that is going to be this large formula. And in this case, instead of B2 to M2, I'm just going to use a row because that is what the Lambda function is using. And now when I hit enter, see what happens. It gives me a calculation error. And when I click on this, uh, yellow triangle, it tells me it's a nested arrays. And this is a limitation of Biro function. And in fact, many uh, dynamic array function where it can only expand either down or to the right, but it cannot expand it in both the direction. So it will not give you an array, which is spilling down as well as spilling to the right. So this is a limitation. Now, if you want to solve this problem, the solution uh, in most cases is something that uses reduce and scan and H tag and functions like those. So it can be done, but that becomes a bit complicated, but this is a limitation you should know about. If you are analyzing each row, it will only give you one single result as uh, the output of Biro function in each cell. It will not give you an array. Another limitation, which to be honest is not really a limitation. This is true for any dynamic array formula is that when you use dynamic array formulas within Excel tables that spill, it doesn't work because in Excel table, there is already this feature that it spills. For example, in this case, I have this uh, converted into an Excel table. And if I enter something like equal to one here, you'll see that it spills in all these cells in the column because by default tables are built in such a way that uh, that the result is going to spill, which means that if I now use a Biro function to do anything, let's say, for example, if I use a Biro function to get the maximum value from this range, so I select this entire thing, then I use the max function, it gives me the spill error because already table spills something and then I'm using Biro to spill it again. So it's going to give me an error. Instead, what you can do is uh, simplify it and simply use the max function so now when I use this function where I just give this first row as the input, you'll see that it spills and it gives me the right result because in this case, it uh, refers to the first row, but in this case, it refers to the second row and so on. So in tables, this functionality is already built in the functionality of spilling. So you uh, do not need to use functions like by row within Excel tables. So these are two limitations, not really two limitations, just one limitation. The table thing is more of a feature that you want to know, but these are the two things you need to know when you're learning about the by row function. So that's all that I wanted to cover about the by row function. Excel also has a very similar function called by call that works the same way, but instead of analyzing each row, it is going to analyze each column. So you can try it out as well. 
That's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. Also, if you're liking these videos, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so that you never miss out on any new Excel tips video I come up with. Thank you and have a nice day.